Hi and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is a brief introduction to Maven. We will look at what Maven is and uh, we'll also learn how to set up Maven on your development environment. So what is Maven? To answer that question in a single sentence is not possible because Maven is a lot of things put into one. Uh, so the most, some of the common um, usages of Maven is to use it as a build tool. It is, uh, it is similar to Ant in this case, for example, and uh, it helps us in building our code in our development environment. Uh, the other role that Maven does is of a project management tool. Uh, it helps to generate reports. It helps in dependency management and things like that. In our tutorial, we're going to focus only on using Maven as a build tool. We're not going to be uh, looking at how it can be used as a project, project management tool. To look at what Maven does for us as uh, a build tool, let's look at some of the common problems and some of the common uh, activities that we perform while uh, developing applications and we need to build them. The first thing is the problem of multiple jars. Let's say I'm using a couple of frameworks in my code and uh, uh, I'll take the example of, say, Spring or uh, Hibernate. Now, in order to use the Hibernate uh, framework in my application, I need to include all the required jars in uh, my application. I need to make them available. Let's say I'm developing a web application. I need to make sure those jars are available during compile time. I need to bundle them in my distribution when I'm uh, deploying it. I need to know what those jars are. Uh, that's a common problem that we face sometimes. Sometimes we uh, miss out on some of the jars. We don't know what the jars are. And uh, this is something that Maven helps uh, helps to solve. A second common problem is dependencies. Say I have a particular jar and that has a dependency on another jar. I need to make sure that all my dependencies are closed. I need to make sure I have supplied all the dependent jars for uh, you know the jars that I already have. Uh, there is a related problem here, which is uh, because of the versions, the dependencies could differ. There could be a lot of instances where we need to make sure that we are matching the right versions of jars in our dependencies. The third common activity we do is uh, to set up the project structure. A simple example is of a web application. We need to make uh, the project structure proper. We need to have the proper directories, a web INF, the libraries. The fourth common activity is to build, to publish, and to deploy. If you're using Ant, you would write all these targets and uh, you would execute those targets uh, whenever you wanted to build, publish, and deploy. So these are four of the common um, activities and some of them are actually problems here that we face when we are uh, you know, writing code and we want to build and uh, publish them. So Maven helps us in these four uh, activities and uh, it has a very elegant solution for each of them. So we'll have a look at how Maven helps us. But uh, before we start, let's set up Maven on our uh, desktop. So we first head over to the Maven website. Uh, Maven is an Apache project. So the, you know, the URL is maven.apache.org. Um, here you would have a download link. Um, it's currently on 3.03 release. Uh, this might be different depending on when you're viewing this tutorial, but uh, just go ahead and um, download one of these. I'm gonna download the, the binary zip file. Okay, now I have uh, downloaded the zip file and I've extracted it here. If I open it, here is the latest Maven release. Uh, now, all that's left to do is set a couple of environment variables. So, um, open up the command prompt or uh, if you're in Windows, you need to change the environment variables in the system properties. Now the first uh, environment variable we need to set is m2home. So if you're on Unix or Linux, you do a m2 underscore home equals and the path where you've extracted maven. The second variable we need to set is the path variable. The reason we do this is so that you can trigger the Maven executable from anywhere in your command prompt and it will point to the right Maven executable which is in the which is in the bin folder here. So we need to pass this path to the path variable. And of course I'll also have to append it with the existing path uh, values 
so that it does not override it. And there you go, we are all set. Now let's test out that uh, Maven is working fine by executing the Maven command. The simple command for Maven is MVN and uh, let's pass the version flag to check what the version is. Yep, we have Maven set up. Well, there's just one more thing. Um, you know, I was telling you that Maven helps us in um, creating the project structure. It helps us in managing dependencies, downloading dependencies and things like that. So all this, uh, you know, intelligence that Maven has comes from what is called as uh, repositories. There are repositories available online and uh, Maven talks to those repositories and gets the information. And that's how Maven helps us um, in all these activities. So one thing we need to make sure is that your machine is connected to the internet because Maven needs to go online and uh, get all this information. If you're connected to the internet, we are, you're all set. Now um, we can actually start using Maven. Now let's look at the first advantage that Maven uh, provides for us uh, regarding the project structure and the directory structure. Let me just make a directory. called my app. I'll go to that directory and I will use a command called maven archetype colon generate. When you run this for the first time, maven will download all the required maven plugins and uh, it takes a while. Okay, now after a whole lot of downloading, uh, this is where we are now. Um, Maven has a prompt displayed for me and it says choose a number and uh, 106 is the default. Now what is this number? You see here there are there is a list of uh, different archetypes here. Uh, what an archetype means is uh, it's, a, it's a model as to how you want your project to be uh, structured. All these are the predefined archetypes. So they come with information about the application itself. Now say I want to create a Spring JSF JPA application, then I would use the Spring JSF JPA archetype. I would give this number 286. So all these are different types of applications that you would want to create. And uh, if you choose one number, then Maven will create a blank application with all the dependencies and all the jars and it'll have it ready for us. So let me go with the default as of now. Um, the default is 106. So if I just press enter, it's going to take 106. Now I can choose the versions. Uh, the versions are, uh, you know, the versions of the archetype itself. So I'll choose the latest version, which is six. Now it's going to download more plugins which are related to this archetype and uh, after that now it's going to ask me for a few properties. The first property is the group ID. This would be similar to uh, a package name that you would create for some of your uh, components. So I'll just give the package name that I would use. The next is the artifact ID. So this would be, this is analogous to a class name while uh, group ID is analogous to a package name. But note that here, what we are defining is for the complete application itself. The, you know, the application that you're creating. Now the artifact ID that I want to use here is, um, let's say Maven test app. So this is the name of uh, the jar or the war that I'm creating by, uh, building and deploying this application that I'm planning to write. Version number, version number by default is uh, 1.0 snapshot, which is fine for now. So I'll just leave that. Define the value for the property package. It's taken the group ID itself, which is fine. It asks for confirmation for uh, the inputs that I've entered. Everything is fine. So I just say yes. And now it's finished. Then what has Maven done now? Let's see. Now it's created a directory called Maven Test App. What's inside that directory? 
So there is a folder called src and there's an XML called pom.xml. Let's check that out. Okay, so now um, at the top, you see the entries that we have entered. We have uh, the group ID, which is uh, you know the package name that we have entered, the artifact ID, which is the name of our application, and uh, the version number. And the packaging, it's taken this as a default. It has made the packaging as a jar, which means that the application that we are trying to write here will be built and packaged as a jar file. There is a name node, which means that uh, this is going to be the name of the application. This can be different from the artifact ID. And uh, what happens if it's different is our application will be called by this name. But when we are actually saving this application, come build application in the repository, the artifact ID for this will be this name. You can ignore the properties. The dependency is where our, uh, you know, the other part of Maven comes into play, which is uh, managing dependencies. We'll get back to this in a minute. Now let's have a look at the SRC folder. Now it has created two folders here. One is the main and one is the test, which is very convenient because we can keep all our uh, Java classes in the main method. It has even organized uh, our package and it has created a simple .java file. And uh, we can also use the test folder in order to save our uh, J unit test cases. So all this is ready for us. We already have a app test or Java. It's already created a test Java class. Now Maven has done all this. It has created all the folder structure. It has created all the required uh, package directories. And it has also created something called as a pom.xml, which has information about the application itself and what the dependencies are. Now let's have a look at the dependencies. So dependencies is mentioned in this pom.xml and uh, there's only one dependency mentioned here, which is the JUnit. The group ID of this dependency is JUnit. The artifact ID is JUnit. It has specified the version and it has also specified what is called a scope, which we'll come to in a minute. But, uh, but look at these three, look at these three items here. So it has mentioned that this project is dependent on JUnit and it is dependent on version number 3.8.1. Now, if JUnit were to be dependent on some other jar, then we wouldn't have to worry about mentioning it here. You know, Maven takes care of getting all the related dependencies. So we need, we just need to include the jars that we need as the first entry point and all the related dependencies will be taken care of by Maven itself. Now that this is done, Let's try to compile this code. 